Hi everyone and welcome to the Swift Case Productivity Podcast with me, Adam Sykes, founder of Swift Case, the professional productivity platform. And I'm Craig McCarthy, developer manager of Swift Case. I'm Phil Whitby, developer at Swift Case. Okay, so today this was an idea that Phil's brought to mm. us. Um, do you want to yeah, give us a bit um, of an idea of what we're talking about? Yeah, something I've been I've been writing a lot of articles about <clears throat> photography and uh, recently and making a podcast and things like that. And I used to do a bit of film production years ago. Um, and one of the things that always cropped up was um, there was always a group of people within uh, this sort of area that would call me say they got all the gear and no idea. Yeah. And that, <laughs> and I realised after that that it applies nearly everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's not, there's always somebody who has sort of like, uh, rather than demonstrate the skill they pre-advertise that they have the skill by getting all the gear before they've really honed yeah. or mastered mm. to the level that the gear justifies yeah. you mentioned it in an early podcast like a friend school who started learning the guitar yeah. and before he could even like you know do a G chord he had a Fender Strat I, I feel yeah. like I've been yeah. quite guilty of this in the past I and I think part of the psychology behind it really is that you feel like you can't get it's not so much I'm not talking more about the bragging like oh yeah, I'm yeah. great at this without even starting but more the psychology behind getting started with something yes, yeah. it, it's quite difficult because you think oh god I've got to get all this mm. stuff in fact initially we struggled a little bit early on to actually just get started with this yeah. because I, I know me, I was like, oh, well, the production's got to be amazing, hasn't it? Yeah. But in actuality, all we needed was a phone. Yeah, really. And, and, yeah, yeah. And a mic. We didn't even need a microphone, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I think, yeah, I've definitely been guilty of that in the past. Oh yeah, definitely all have. Oh, before yeah. starting yeah. something, you're like, oh god, I've got, I've got yeah. to get the best one, otherwise it's going to be rubbish. Yeah, yeah. It's like learning guitar. Yeah. I've. I remember I bought. <laughs> I bought an electric guitar. Right? So got, must have spent about two hundred and fifty quid on it. That's quite cheap. Yeah, it's it's not too bad, but I could have got one for eighty. Yeah, um, um, you know, one for beginners, for yeah, like, yeah just absolute started. novices. Got a yeah. second hand one, yeah. but I was like, no, I want to get this one because it's really cool. And it'll make me do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Make you sound yeah. better. Yeah, but I, I used it for about half an hour. To be yeah, yeah, then yeah. Just didn't get touched. So th- though you maybe you didn't have like understand why you were doing it. Yeah, maybe exactly. it was like maybe you had that kind of. Was looking cool. Isn't Most, it? Yeah, that was the motivation. Like yeah. I remember when I started playing guitar, I really, really desperately wanted to play a song that I'd heard, mm. which was Layla by Eric Clapton. Mm. That was it. I just wanted to play that song, and uh, we had some builders in our house doing the loft conversion, and one of them was, it must have been only like seventeen or eighteen himself, and I was only like twelve or thirteen, and he taught it a very simple version of it, and that was it. Then I was hooked, and all I wanted them to do was to play songs that I heard that yeah. I really liked, yeah. and so that was my motivation. And it didn't well, they, they were playing the rock. When they getting on with the loft? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it. Yeah. Well, now, now I realise I've been totally <laughs> added value. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I've definitely been guilty of other things. Like, so say, um, you know, with, with the photography, you know, mm. I, you always feel like I wasn't gonna be respected if I was seen with a camera. Mm-hmm. If I did, didn't, you know, by other professionals, or I wasn't gonna be able to get the shots that these my favourite photographers had got. You know, which is why I like something like Leica. Is a brand it's so prominent amongst top professionals mm-hmm. because one of the first top professionals and many of the like war photographers, you know, um, Don DeLillo, uh, no, no, he's a writer, sorry. Um, I'm thinking of the other Don, he's a photographer, I forget his name now. But um, there are loads of those used Leica cameras, and now Leica can charge £10,000 for a camera. Yeah. Much like, you know, they're a bit like the Apple mm-hmm. of photography, uh, in fact, even more so. Um, and that feeling was always there, like, oh, especially using that piece of equipment, it's got to be the best one, otherwise I won't be able to take the best photographs. So it was all yeah. about the yeah. anxiety, about yeah, performance, exactly. legitimacy, all those things were, were tied up in it. Yeah. But the reality is, unless you've got the skills to use that particular camera, it's still shit. You're still, <laughs> you, you, yeah. Yeah, your photos yeah. are still going to be rubbish, aren't they? Yeah. And I suppose yeah. that, that's the, the key with this, all the gear and no idea. I mean, I'm into mm. walking. And yeah. we, we spot them all out in the brand new, yeah. brand new big house, all the things. Yeah. That, yeah. Like but the if, gym and yeah. things like that is such yeah. a, a yeah. famous example. Yeah. Jan- January is in the gym. Yeah. yeah, everyone gets, everyone spends like hundreds of pounds on this yeah. gym gear. Like they'll buy like a twenty pound water bottle or something, and they yeah. quit after yeah. a month. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. It's, they can't read a map on the map. It's a vicious side. circle. Yeah, it's a yeah. vicious circle. Yeah. You kind of go. I, well, if you don't have the motivation, intrinsic motivation, you need to get it from externally. If you need to get it externally, it won't 
sustain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as soon as you recognise that you feel like you need to buy the best stuff, you should recognise that you don't really have motivation in that case. Mm-hmm. And you're looking yeah, outside. I mean, part of what my research for that article did was looking at how marketing and public relations engendered this need for things to do things. So the really interesting part was Edward Bernays, first PR guru to speak. He convinced women to start smoking by attaching it to feminist principles. So they used it as a torch for freedom. Because prior to the 20s, women didn't smoke at all. It was a male thing to do. Until he convinced women that they could liberate themselves from the patriarchy by smoking. Now for me, as well as all that stuff that he's done, he's done some other things as well that we haven't got time to go into today. It's that kind of um, manipulation is what I think has made people feel that way when they start a new enterprise. Is to think, oh right, oh well, well, I'm anxious. I've been convinced that that anxiety can be allayed by these products. Yeah, I, I should buy them. Yeah. And that really, that's kind of like sustaining a lot of a, you know, economic growth for years and years and years. Is this everywhere people turn is an opportunity for anxiety and therefore an opportunity to yeah. be mollified by a product mm-hmm. purchase. Yeah, which is why we have retail therapy. Yeah. And I think that, that that's the key. How I think a lot of businesses have changed the way they approach certainly new businesses. Yeah. It's more about uh, training people, and that's that's how we approach our sort of marketing, don't we? That it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. it's about how can we add value yeah. and teach people things that may not yeah. even necessarily yeah. be directly related to what we sell, but it's it's in the same sort of arena. So we want businesses to be able to be more productive, and we yeah. we put on articles that are in our blog that are about how to be more productive by working. Yeah. You know, teaching them like a, a way of thinking yeah. rather than a way yeah. of acting, like a yeah. way of, you know. Yeah. We're not manipulating them into thinking they need it short term and then to discover that they don't. Yeah. That's like, that is, you know, it's convincing them that's the that. right way of doing it. Yeah, exactly. It. And then they'll be yeah. loyal and they'll stay with you as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think that, that's the key thing, isn't it? It's not about things, it's about a way of life or a vision yeah. or something that is sustainable. That's, that's sustainable, yeah. yeah. Because if you do go out and get the latest camera, you're not even you don't know how to take a photo yeah. you don't know how to frame the photo yeah you don't know about depth of field and, yeah, and yeah, all exactly. these things your photo is going to be no better on that camera in fact they're probably worse absolutely yeah, yeah. cheaper no, camera that's, that's where yeah. it's already got everything built in with an yeah. auto focus yeah. exactly you yeah. know yeah. leave yeah. it on auto mode and, yeah. and well, that, you'll get a great that's exactly photo. what i did with um with a, a camera phone I, yeah i had it ages ago um it had like 20 megapixels and it had an amazing pro mode but mm. i was very much not a pro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, whereas if it would have just got an, a normal phone, it had amazing auto features, yeah. and everyone else was taking amazing yeah, pictures yeah, with yeah, this yeah. phone. Like just it's in, in my experience, in photography, actually, the skill comes from being able to get the right photo in like one percent of the time. Mm-hmm. Like so, most people, well, like ninety nine percent of the time, auto will work. Yeah, and that's so. You know, if, if I was photographing a wedding, I could leave on auto. Mm. and that would work until there was a crucial moment that couldn't be missed like the first kiss yeah. getting the ring on things like that mm. and then suddenly changing like the focus or the change in the zoom or anything like that would actually change the way the light comes in and then the auto would the shutter speed would go too low get blurry yeah. so being able to predict those issues and then sort of like mitigate them before they happen is part of what the skill is Yeah. so most people go oh, I've just taken a photo that worked out well mm. I'm good enough to be a professional now yeah. yeah. Actually, no, it's not. It's those tiny it's, instances where you can fail, where it's crucial. Yeah, and it's practice, yeah. isn't it? And it, you know, that's, that's where you've yeah. got to rely on companies and, and uh, products and things where you know they've put in the time to to learn yeah. what yeah. they you know to mitigate to, those scenarios. To, that yeah, because you, you only know that through you know experiencing them, mm-hmm. don't you? You're not, mm-hmm. or you read enough books or do enough training yeah. or. Yeah. You know, that's where you want to spend your money. Spend your money on books. Exactly. Yeah. You know, spend your money on learning things and, yeah. and, and improving your skills rather than or at least being prepared to fail. Using. Don't mm. don't go in assuming that you're gonna be yeah. great straight away just because you've got the wristbands yeah. and the, the two hundred quid racket. Yeah. Go in assuming you're gonna fail at first, and then that's fine. You know, if I'm going to learn and you think I'm gonna enjoy laughing at my own failure yeah. I, d- I disagree yeah. I, I like to go yeah. into things thinking you're going to succeed oh that's interesting so uh, you know, the, at the very first instance things. like say if yeah. I was learning something I suppose it's something different from like you can achieve something yeah but 
it's a success if I achieve yeah. like hitting a forehand in my first. Yeah, there's a realistic yeah. expectation. But I'm not going to yeah, that's exactly yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So to, yeah. rather than thinking you're going to fail, yeah. go in with a realistic, realistic expectation. expectation. Yeah. I think as long as you go in expecting a journey, yeah, really as well because it's there's yeah. there's kind of something poetic about starting something and being. Rubbish yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you can look back at it and go, oh, you can build your own montage, yeah. your own yeah, exactly. montage. Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah. what I do with, with everything. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> well, the thing is, yeah, if you don't put the hours in, you don't put the time in, you're never going to achieve anything. Great, exactly. You? You, know, exactly. You, can't, you, can't, you can't jump ahead just yeah. by paying out. Yeah. You've got to put that, that yeah. time in to improve and to, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's take great photos, run your business, or yeah. whatever it is, you, you yeah. have to spend the time. And you can leverage other people and like take experience from other people. If you don't know what you're doing, that's true. Yeah. Best thing to do is go and find someone yeah. who does know what they're doing yeah. and get them to show you. Because having said that, when I did learn guitar, like even though I could teach myself most of the time, I remember instances where I played with someone else who was more experienced, yeah. and I probably learned more exactly in that one that's hour thing, session it? than I had in like three months prior to that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the same here. I, yeah. I learned the guitar, and you can you can get a chord book. Yeah, or you can try and play along to something. But yeah, someone who's amazing, just like yeah, I think, yeah, um, saying it's just I think to be fair though, with that now, like we've talked about it before, haven't we? The way of learning, yeah. Um, YouTube has been yeah, a exactly, big yeah. one, and that you, you kind of simulate that because sometimes you just don't have access, yeah, to the sort of help do you that, that you want from maybe a one on one yeah. session, yeah. But if you pop on YouTube, it's like almost like well, also, it's you can do it at your own pace, and exactly. you're not you're not suffering from with someone else looking at you, of, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. anxiety. So, again, yeah, that. And that also comes on something we discussed earlier in private with someone else about how you know children as performers now they're much more natural performers in front of camera because mm. they've literally had up with years it. and years of practice that mm. we never had yeah. so by seeing a very highly polished well produced production by 16 year olds it's not a surprise mm. it would have been a much bigger surprise 20 years ago because mm-hmm. they would never have that opportunity yeah. to practice but we see when we go and see it we think it's amazing yeah. but I'm sure there's kids like well yeah. yeah but I wonder yeah. I mean without going too far off topic I wonder how much of an issue it is though that they've been subjected to yeah that's another needing yeah. to perform yeah and like the anxiety that that must mm-hmm. produce that they've always constantly been monitored on their performance that's whether true. it's like, yeah. Instagram photos mm-hmm. or whatever it is yeah. YouTube videos yeah you know whereas oh, yeah. we you know does that constant pressure have, have we? Have I've, we I've said it many times. I, I, I mean, to be yeah. fair, for when you brought that up, I was like, oh my god, I finally found an advantage of, of you know, these kids growing up in front of the camera, yeah, and social yeah. media, and everything. But other than that, I think everything would be horrendous growing up now. Um, but we've schools, discussed as well privately. Like, schools, I think, schools themselves, the environment that you're in at school, it can be is extremely testing. Yeah. And the pressure that you're under, even but without Instagram and all those sorts of things. Now though, like you're going home after school. And rather than having like just the anxiety of, of everyone, you know, yeah. the social aspect of school, you're taking that home with you now. Yeah, because it's all over Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Twitter, yeah. and but so on. But the kids yeah. just worry about that when they're at home anyway. I know I did. You know, whether it was when I went home yeah. or when I was getting ready for school in the morning, I was worried about it. Mm-hmm. I thought, I wonder whether. Now you're right, I think taking home, it's like homework, anxiety for your homework, isn't it? Yeah. You know, that should be left at school. Yeah. Anyway, I think yeah. we might be going a bit off yeah. topic and maybe we'll revisit the <laughs> yeah. pressures of, of social media in a future episode. Yeah, so good idea. I think the, the key the key points we probably covered today is don't just go out and spend on uh, yeah. gear that you haven't got any idea how to <laughs> use. Um, spend the time learning about yeah. how to get the best out of things. You know, Connect with other people who know what yeah. they're talking about. Have realistic expectations. And have realistic yeah. expectations. But ultimately, you know, if you put the time and you put the effort and you... You know, you consult the right people. Mm. You know, then eventually, you, you know, you can make things happen. Yeah. So hopefully, you've enjoyed today's podcast. Yeah, and if you want to find out more about some of the things that we do, um, and we know how to do it quite well, um, <laughs> check us out on swiftcase.co.uk, and also check us out on social media at swiftcase UK. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to give us any feedback about what we do, and what we talk about, then leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. That's great. Thanks. I've been Adam Sykes, and this has been the Swiftcase Productivity Podcast. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.